Hi friends, it's Pastor Haley and this is Simply Scripture where we are reading through the Bible in a year. Today is day 87 and we are in 2 Samuel chapter 19 through 21. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for time together in your word. Tune our hearts into yours and help to change and transform us from the inside out. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Excuse me. Second Samuel 19. Joab was told, The king is weeping and mourning for Absalom, and for the whole army the victory that day was turned into mourning, because the day the troops heard it said, the king is grieving for his son. The men stole into the city that day as men steal in who are ashamed when they flee from battle. The king covered his face and cried aloud, O oh, my Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Then Joab went into the house to the king and said, Today you have, a, today you have humiliated all your men who have just saved your life and the lives of your sons and daughters and the lives of your wives and concubines. You love those who hate you and hate those who love you. You have made it clear today that the commanders and their men mean nothing to you. I see that you would be pleased if Absalom were alive today and all of us were dead. Now go and encourage your men. I swear by the Lord that if you don't go out, not a man will be left with you by nightfall. This will be worse for you than all the calamities that have come on you from your youth till now. So the king got up and took his seat in the gateway. When the men were told the king is sitting in the gateway, they all came before him. Meanwhile, the Israelites had fled to their homes. Throughout the tribes of Israel, all the people were arguing among themselves, saying, The king delivered us from the hand of our enemies. He is the one who rescued us from the hand of the Philistines. But now he has fled to the but now he has fled the country to escape from Absalom. And Absalom, whom we anointed to rule over us, has died in battle. So why do you say nothing about bringing the king back? King David sent this message to Zadok and Abiathar the priest. Ask the elders of Judah, why should you be the last to bring back the king to his palace, since that since what is being said throughout Israel has reached the king at his quarters? You are my relatives, my own flesh and blood. So why should you be the last to bring back the king? And say to Amasa, Are you not my own flesh and blood? May God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if you are not the commander of my army for life in the place of Joab. He won over the hearts of the men of Judah, so that they were all of one mind. They sent word to the king, Return, you and all your men. Then the king returned and went as far as the Jordan. Now the men of Judah had come to Gilgal to go out and meet the king and bring him across the Jordan. Shimea, Shimei, son of Gera, the Benjamite from Baharum, hurried down with the men of Judah to meet King David. With them were a thousand Benjamites, along with Ziba, the steward of Saul's household, and his fifteen sons and twenty servants. They rushed toward the Jordan where the king was. They crossed at the ford to take the king's household over and to do whatever he wished. When Shimei, son of Gera, crossed the Jordan, he fell prostrate before the king and said to him, May my lord not hold me guilty. Do not remember how your servant did wrong on the day my lord the king left Jerusalem. May the king put it out of his mind. For I, your servant, know that I have sinned, but today I have come here as the first from the tribes of Joseph to come down and meet my lord the king. Then Abishai, son of Zariah, said, Shouldn't Shimei be put to death? For this, he cursed the Lord's anointed. David replied, What does this have to do with you, you sons of Zariah? What right do you have to interfere? Should anyone be put to death in Israel today? Don't I know that today I am king over Israel? So the king said to Shimei, You shall not die. And the king promised him on oath. Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson, also went down to meet the king. He had not taken care of his feet or trimmed his mustache or washed his clothes from the day the king left until the day he returned safely. When he came from Jerusalem to meet the king, the king asked him, Why didn't you go with me, Mephibosheth? He said, My lord the king, since I, your servant, am lame, I said, I would have my donkey saddled and ride on it so I can go with the king. But Ziba, my servant, betrayed me. 
And he slandered your servant to my lord the king. My lord the king is like an angel of God, so do whatever you wish. All my grandfather's descendants deserve nothing but death from my lord the king. But you gave your servant a place among those who eat at your table. So what right do I have to make any more appeals to the king? The king said to him, Why say more? I order you and Ziba to divide the land. Mephibosheth said to the king, Let him take everything, now that my lord the king has returned home safely. Barzillai, the Gileadite, also came down from Ragalim to cross the Jordan with the king and to send him on his way from there. Now Barzillai was very old, 80 years of age. He had provided for the king during his stay in Mahanam, for he was a very wealthy man. The king said to Barzillai, Cross over with me and stay with me in Jerusalem, and I will provide for you. But Barzillai answered the king, How many more years will I live that I should go up to Jerusalem with the king? I'm now 80 years old. Can I tell the difference between what is enjoyable and what is not? Can your servant taste what he eats and drinks? Can I still hear the voices of male and female singers? Why should your servant be an added burden to my lord, the king? Your servant will cross over the Jordan with the king for a short distance, but why should the king reward me in this way? Let your servant return that I may die in my own town near the tomb of my father and mother. But here is your servant, Kimham. Let him cross over with my lord, the king. Do for him whatever you wish. The king said, Kimham shall cross over with me, and I will do for him whatever you wish, and anything you desire from me I will do for you. So all the people crossed the Jordan, and then the king crossed over. The king kissed Barzillai and bid him farewell, and Barzillai returned to his home. When the king crossed over to Gilgal, Kimham crossed with him. All the troops of Judah and half the troops of Israel had taken the king over. Soon all the men of Israel were coming to the king and saying to him, Why did our brothers, the men of Judah, steal the king away and bring him and his household across the Jordan together with all his men? All the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, We did this because the king is closely related to us. Why are you angry about it? Have we eaten any of the king's provisions? Have we taken anything for ourselves? Then the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, We have ten shares in the king, so we have a great claim on David. So we have a greater claim on David than you have. Why then do you treat us with contempt? Weren't we the first to speak of bringing back our king? But the men of Judah pressed their claims even more forcefully than the men of Israel. Second Samuel 20. Now a troublemaker named Sheba, son of Bekir, a Benjamite, happened to be there. He sounded a trumpet and shouted, We have no share in David, no part in Jesse's son, every man to his tent, Israel. So all the men of Israel deserted David to follow Sheba, son of Bekir. But the men of Judah stayed by their king all the way from the Jordan to Jerusalem. When David returned to his palace in Jerusalem, he took the ten concubines he had left to take care of the palace and put them in a house under guard. He provided for them but had no sexual relations with them. They were kept in confinement till the day of their death, living as widows. Then the king said to Amasa, Summon the men of Judah to come to me within three days and be here yourself. But when Amasa went to summon Judah, he took longer than the time the king had set for him. David said to Abishai, Now Sheba, son of Bekir, will do us more harm than Absalom did. Take your master's men and pursue him, or he will find fortified cities and escape from us. Jo- so Joab's men and the Kirathites and Pilathites and all the mighty warriors went out under the command of Abishai. They marched out from Jerusalem to pursue Sheba, son of Bekir. When they were at the great rock of Gil, while they were at the great rock, at- while they were at the great rock in Gibeon, Amasa came to meet Joab. Nope. While they were at the great rock in Gibeon, Amasa came to meet them. Joab was wearing his military tunic and strapped over it at his waist was a belt with a dagger in its sheath. As he stepped forward, it dropped out of its sheath. Joab said to Amasa, How are you, my brother? Then Joab took Amasa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him. 
Amasa was not on his guard against a dagger in Joab's hand, and Joab plunged it into his belly, and his intestines spilled out on the ground. Without being stabbed again, Amasa died. Then Joab and his brother Abishai pursued Sheba, son of Bekir. One of Joab's men stood beside Amasa and said, Whoever favors Joab and whoever is for David, let him follow Joab. Amasa lay wallowing in his blood in the middle of the road, and the man saw that all the troops came to a halt there. When he realized that everyone who came up to Amasa stopped, he dragged him from the road into a field and threw a garment over him. After Amasa had been removed from the road, everyone went on with Joab to pursue Sheba, son of Bekir. Sheba passed through all the tribes of Israel to Abelbeth Makkah and through the entire region of the Bikarites, who gathered together and followed him. All the troops with Joab came and besieged Sheba and Abelbeth Makkah. They built a siege ramp up to the city and stood it against the outer fortifications. While they were battering the wall to bring it down, a wise woman called from the city, Listen, listen, tell Joab to come here so I can speak to him. He went toward her and she asked, Are you Joab? I am, he answered. She said, Listen to what your servant has to say. I'm listening, he said. She continued, Long ago they used to say, Get your answer at Abel, and that settled it. We are the peaceful and faithful in Israel. You're trying to destroy a city that is a mother in Israel. Why do you want to swallow up the Lord's inheritance? Far be it from me, Joab replied. Far be it from me to swallow up or destroy. That is not the case. A man named Sheba, son of Bekir, from the hill country of Ephraim, has lifted up his hand against the king, against David. Hand over this one man and I'll withdraw from the city. The woman said to Joab, his head will be thrown to you from the wall. Then the woman went to all the people with her wise advice, and they cut off the head of Sheba, son of Bekir, and threw it to Joab. So he sounded the trumpet, and his men dispersed from the city, each returning to his home. And Joab went back to the king in Jerusalem. Joab, Joab was over Israel's entire army. Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, was over the Kirathites and Pilathites. Adoriam was in charge of forced labor. Jehoshaphat son, of Ahe Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was recorder. Sheba was secretary. Zadok and Abiathar were priests. And Ira the Jairite was David's priest. Second Samuel 21. During the reign of David, there was a famine for three successive years. So David sought the face of the Lord. The Lord said, it is on account of Saul and his blood-stained house. It is because he put the Gibeonites to death. The king summoned the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not a part of Israel, but were survivors of the Amorites. The Israelites had sworn to spare them, but Saul and his zeal for Israel and Judah had tried to annihilate them. David asked the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? How shall I make atonement so that you will bless the Lord's inheritance? The Gibeonites answered him, we have no right to demand silver or gold from Saul or his family, nor do we have the right to put anyone in Israel to death. What do you want me to do for you? David asked. They answered the king. As for the man who destroyed us and plotted us and plotted against us so that we have been decimated and have no place anywhere in Israel, let seven of his male descendants be given to us to be killed and their bodies exposed before the Lord at Gibeah of Saul, the Lord's chosen one. The king said, I will give them to you. The king spared Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the oath before the Lord between David and Jonathan, son of Saul. But the king took Armoni, but the king took Armoni, 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 but the king took Armoni and Mephibosheth, the two sons of Ahai's daughter, Rizpah, whom she had borne to Saul, together with the five sons of Saul's daughter Merab, whom she had borne to Adriel, son of Barzillai, the Meholathite, he handed them over to the Gibeonites, who killed them and exposed their bodies on a hill before the Lord. All seven of them fell together. They were put to death during the first days of the harvest, just as the barley harvest was beginning. Rizpah, daughter of Ahai, daughter of Ahai, 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 Ahai,
Rizpah, daughter of Ah, took sackcloth and spread it out for herself on a rock. From the beginning of the harvest till the rain poured down from the heavens on the bodies, she did not let the birds touch them by day or the wild animals by night. When David was told what Ai's daughter Rizpah, Saul's concubine, had done, he went and took the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan from the citizens of Gate, from the citizens of Jabesh Gilead. They'd stolen their bodies from the public square at Beth Sham, at Beth Shan, where the Philistines had hung them after they struck Saul down on Gilboa. David brought the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan from there, and the bones of those who had been killed and exposed were gathered up. They buried the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan in the tomb of Saul's father Kish at Zela and Benjamin, and did everything the king commanded. After that, God answered prayer in behalf of the land. Once again, there was a battle between the Philistines and Israel. David went down with his men to fight against the Philistines, and he became exhausted. And Ish Binob, one of the descendants of Rapha, whose bronze spearhead weighed 300 shekels and who was armed with a new sword, said he would kill David. But Abishai, son of Zeruiah, came to David's rescue. He struck the Philistine down and killed him. Then David's men swore to him, saying, Never again will you go out with us to battle, so that the lamp of Israel will not be extinguished. In the course of time, there was another battle with the Philistines at Gob. At that time, Sebeka, the Hushkathite, killed Saph, one of the Sibekai Hushathite. At that time, Sibekai the Hushathite killed Saph, one of the descendants of Rapha. In another battle with the Philistines at Gob, Elhanah, son of Jair, the Bethlehemite, Bethle Bethlehemite, son of Jair, the Bethlehemite, killed the brother of Gal the Bethlehemite, killed the brother of Goliath the Gittite who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. And still another battle, which took place at Gath, there was a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, 24 in all. He also was descended from Rapha. When he taunted Israel, Jonathan, son of Shemiah, David's brother, killed him. These four were descendants of Rapha and Gath, and they fell at the hands of David and his men. Thanks for reading and listening along. Come back tomorrow for the rest of 2 Samuel.